You know, it's really fascinating. One of the primary things that helps us open our hearts and welcome love in, especially if you've been in a pattern of you haven't been able to attract the person that you want to attract into your life, you haven't had that relationship and you look at, gosh, what's in the way? And you notice that, you know what? My heart might be closed. I might have resistance to actually attracting someone that I really like. It's very, very fascinating that one of the skill sets that's missing that comes up is our willingness to both decide on and set boundaries in a healthy way. And so today I'm gonna to give you a beautiful framework for how you can set a boundary that instead of pushing the person away actually bonds the two of you together even more. Check it out. Hey there, my name is Matt Boggs and I'm the founder of the Love and Relationships Division here at the Brave Thinking Institute where our mission is empowering people to create and live a life they love and that includes your love life. So if you like this video, I encourage you to subscribe to this channel and click that little bell because every week we bring you videos to empower you in your love life. There's something that's really fascinating in all the coaching I've done over the last decade. There's always this pattern where someone who's resisting getting into a relationship and the way you know that is if they're not finding anyone that they're attracted to and the people who are attracted to them, right? They don't have interest, but the ones that they are attracted to don't like them back. That's a very common pattern where someone really keeps love at bay in a convenient way. And the reason they do that, it isn't because there are no great guys. It isn't because there aren't guys they would find attractive that would like them back. That Those guys don't exist. That's not the reason. The reason is there's an undergirding energetic repulsion to letting a man really into their heart. And when I start to ask really powerful questions that sort of unlock why that's going on, it almost always comes down to the fact that they've been hurt in the past. And part of the reason, part of the equation that they were hurt in the past is they didn't assert themselves early enough. They saw red flags that they didn't speak about, or they let a man cross some boundaries that they weren't comfortable with in the beginning, but they didn't say anything. They didn't set their boundaries early enough, strong enough in a way that helped keep them safe and help keep them out of a painful situation where a guy broke their heart. So right now, I'm gonna give you five really powerful steps that you can use to set boundaries in a way that doesn't repel the guy that you like, but actually draws him in and gives that relationship the greatest chance possible. Number one is to make a commitment to setting boundaries and keeping your standards. That commitment to yourself is the foundation of everything that you do. It's actually the groundwork that you're saying, okay, I'm gonna commit to myself that I'm gonna be the woman who sets a boundary, sets her standard in this relationship. Number two is to make friends with what boundaries mean. See, often we were raised in ways that, or maybe you've had experiences, when you set a standard or you set a boundary, you did it in such a way that it actually repelled the guy. And so now you've got fear of loss connected to a boundary. So the more you like that guy and the greater the fear of loss, the less your willingness to stand up for yourself, the less your willingness to state what you really want, the less your willingness to actually assert a boundary or a standard because you're afraid, I'm gonna lose this guy that I really, really like. And so you gotta reassociate what setting boundaries is in your mind so there's no resistance to it. Instead of you losing someone who could be great, Know this, setting a standard or a boundary actually validates the greatness and the right partner that this guy is for you. In other words, if you set a standard or a boundary, let's just say you're not willing to sleep with him on the first date and he wants to sleep on the first date, right? And you set that standard for yourself. If he gets angry, if he gets mad at you, if he tries to shame you or like guilt you, he is not the right guy for you. Like, let that guy go. What a great test to see, does this guy have the character to match and respect your standards and boundaries? So know this, your setting a standard is a filter that weeds out the bad guys, the guys who are not a good fit for you, and, and brings in the guys who are a great fit for you. So that's number two, is to make friends with boundaries because boundaries actually are a really healthy thing that help people build respect for one another. Number three is to decide in advance what your boundaries are. In other words, what are your standards when it comes to kissing? What are your standards when it comes to sleeping together? What are your standards when it comes to actually being committed and monogamous 
in a relationship with him? What are your standards? Whatever it is that you want for your love life, along the way there are steps of getting more and more committed, more and more intimate in that relationship. What are your standards for where the quality of the relationship needs to be in alignment with those elements of the relationship? And if you would love help with this, if you've struggled with knowing what are my standards, what are my boundaries, and how do I communicate that, I'm gonna post a link for you in the comment section and in the description because we teach a beautiful session on this in Manifest Your Man where we teach you exactly how to identify what your standards are, what your boundaries are, how do you communicate those in a beautiful way in a relationship. So go ahead and check that out. See if that program feels like a fit for you because this particular session could be really, really powerful for you. So you've committed to having standards and boundaries. You have made friends with that concept that is actually supporting you rather than sabotaging you. You've decided in advance what they are. Step number four is to set your boundary immediately. And what this means is don't wait until he's crossed the boundary to bring it up before it even happens, as he's suggesting, like as he's going in for the kiss, right? And you're not ready to give him a kiss. And I'll share with you what you can do as step number five. But as he's doing that, before he crosses the boundary, set your boundary. It means that you've got to be self-assertive. There's a great book written by Nathaniel Brandon called The Six Pillars of Self-Esteem. And they talked about one of the elements that helps us grow our self-esteem, because self-esteem is a muscle that we have. One of those six is self-assertiveness. When you stand up for yourself for something that you believe in or a way that you would love to be treated, naturally your own self-esteem rises because what you're doing is you're showing that you value yourself. So in a relationship, on a date, you know, he puts his arm around you or he snuggles you in on my first date with my wife. I kind of brought her in and snuggled her and she was okay with that, but then I was like, hey, can I kiss you? And she was like, no. Like, I don't even know you that well. This is our first date. Like, I like you, you're sexy, you're attractive, but I don't kiss on the first date. Now, there's nothing wrong with kissing on the first date. If you love to kiss on the first date, go with it. But it wasn't her standard. She wanted to wait before we kissed. And so I respected that. And it was very interesting. Whether she let me kiss on the first date or not, I don't know how much that mattered. But what mattered to me was that she was willing to voice her standard. And that I found sexy because that showed that she respects herself. She values herself. And a man wants to be with a woman who values herself. And this brings us to step number five. Step number five is be direct and yet affirming. And here's what that means. You want to be direct in your boundary with him, but you also want to affirm what you like about him. Let him know that he still has a chance with you because anytime you state a boundary, there's this sort of pushing away effect that happens. He wants something or wanting to take the relationship to a stage that you're saying no or you're saying slow. To counteract that, you want to affirm what you do like about him. And whether it was on purpose, whether it was conscious or not, my wife did this in a brilliant way on our first date because I asked her if I could give her a kiss and she was like, no, you're attractive, you're sexy, but I reserve that for someone I've been on many more dates with. And I was like, all right. And it didn't sting, it didn't push me away because she just said she finds me attractive, she found me sexy. Ooh, I know then that she probably wants to kiss me too, but the, this is her standard. That is so powerful and you can use that. And so be firm in your standard, be firm in that boundary, but affirm what it is that you like about him. Let's say you've been dating a guy for a while, he wants to have sex and you're not quite ready yet. And he's like, hey, let's, you're making out on the couch, you wanna to go to the bedroom? And he's like, let's take it into the bedroom. If you really like him, you can say something like, you have no idea how bad I wanna do that right now. And I'm reserving that for someone that we're in a committed monogamous relationship and you and I aren't quite there yet or whatever your standard is. Let's say a guy wants to hang out, a guy wants to get closer to you than you're comfortable with in that moment. And you can say, you know what? You're really charming and you're really attractive. And I reserve that for someone I've been on more dates with, or I reserve that for someone that we've known each other a little bit longer. So let's take things slow and maybe we'll get there. That is both affirming and it's aspirational. Now he's got a goal, something to achieve. And here's what's great. Men love women who are selective shows they value themselves. It shows then, then when he finally does get the kiss, he does achieve whatever it is that that standard that you've set, now he feels special because he knows that he's earned the right to have and share that experience with you. It's really, really beautiful. So take these five steps, let it ground 
what your boundaries are, how to set those boundaries, set them early and affirm him as you're setting those and you'll find that it completely changes your ability to open your heart and give yourself more possibilities in love. My question for you is what have you found works really well when it comes to setting boundaries in your relationships? Go and share your strategies in the comment section below. I'm gonna love reading those. Know this, this is for you, I believe in you. The best is yet to come in your relationships. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.